I say shalom to my brothers and sisters that are here, and I'm, go, I'm going to also say shalom to my brothers and sisters who are watching. Um, so all praise to the Lord. We're going to get into this subject. Uh, the subject that I want to deal with is somewhat, uh, I don't know if I'm going to call it out of the ordinary, but it is entitled Stand Up and Be Counted. Stand Up and Be Counted. Okay. Uh, the reason why I want to talk about that is because there comes a point in the life of an Israelite that they have to be reckoned on this earth as the people of God. And we, can, we as the Israelite people, we cannot live in the shadows. The nation of Israel is not a shadow people. We've been through the shadows already. Give me that in uh, Psalms 80. Three? Is it 80, uh, 83 and the third verse, I think it is. We are not to live in the shadows. And I'm making a point that we, as a people of God, we are returning from the life of being abased. We are returning from the vomit that we've been subjected to. And we have to be that light that shineth in a dark place. We also have to be that city for all of the people to see. That's why that class that was done at the opening of Tabernacles, I talked about the saints and the city. Okay, the city is, is, is the understanding of how organized we are to be. We are not to, to quote unquote learn organization from the nations. The nations have to learn organization from the nation of God, which is the Israelites. The Bible says that out of Zion shall go forth the law. The Bible says that, the, that Israel is the author of beauty. We are the former of all things. It's, it's come to a time where we have to relish and put that coat on. Put on your beautiful garments like it says in Isaiah 52, I think it is. So read that, and I'm going to get both of those. Read that, and then give me Isaiah 52. Yes, sir. Psalms chapter 83 and verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Our enemies, because we got to talk about the enemies. Our enemies are rejoicing over our destruction. They're rejoicing on how they made the gold of God dim. How they've, how they've taken the shine off of our diamond. How they've taken the, the, uh, the, 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 the greatness of our shineability or the luster of our greatness how has the light of israel become dim read it again they have taken crafty counsel the against na the nations our enemies have taken crafty counsel i'm gonna go through a series of records and books that shows how the uh how they have taken crafty counsel and when we actually began to to stack up these these stack the the uh, the deck to see how it was done, you will see that it is exactly a conspiracy to keep us from ever rising to where we're supposed to be. This is real, okay? the the way The way we live as a people is the result of a conspiracy. And without our connection to God, we don't even know which way is up. So the objective is to keep us out of the proper light that can, that, can, that can illuminate us beyond the darkness by which the nations uh, endeavor to keep us in. And I say endeavor because the Bible says that we have to endeavor to keep the unity. But at the, So while we're trying to learn what that's all about, all of the nations together have endeavored, meaning that it is a, it is a continuous effort to keep us on the bottom. The first thing in realizing and overcoming uh, oppression, overcoming uh, uh, a detriment, overcoming uh, slavery, mental slavery, is to first understand where you are. We have to understand where we are as a people, understand what it is, and then have the vision beyond it to get out of it. In order for us to get out of it, we have to have the right light. Can't have a bud light. 
<laughs> can't have a spotlight. <laughs> can't have a match light. You got to have the right light, the commandments. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. So read that again. Psalms chapter 83 and verse 3. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. The nations have taken crafty counsel against the nation of Israel. Come on. And consulted against thy hidden ones. And they have consulted. So there's consultation. When you think about consultation, that means people sit down and have discussions. Con consultation. When you talk about seeking a consultant to get something done, you seek an expert. I need a consultant to figure out how to set up my IT apparatus or whatever or to deal with this thing or to deal with that. And I call in a consultant. And the consultant is an expert. So they have people that are, that, that are, that are fixated on doing nothing but destroying us. And those people have been called to the table. That's part of their endeavoring. They endeavor by seeking those witches, so you can understand, those warlocks, to sit down and say, we need to come up with a plan to make sure that the name of Israel never get back into the memory of the people of God. So standing up to be counted is to go against what we're reading, is to go against the counsel, against the consultation to keep us destroyed. Read it again. Yes, sir. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. Crafty counsel, not just regular counsel, crafty counsel. Counsel that is not easily noticed. Counsel that you won't necessarily read in, in, in easy to find books. Because although I have a stack, you know, I have a pretty, you know, I got some stuff up here where the councils, where, where the uh, actions of their councils are recorded, and they'll let we, they will allow us to read these things all day. It's basically saying that you have all of the uh, doors that lead to your freedom, but the keys to opening them is not going to be in those books. The keys to figuring out where we need to go to, in order to open up those locks of information so that we can get out of this mess is in the Bible. And that's the reason why they have Christianity. That's the reason why they have these different, uh, all kinds of religions. You can be anything. You can say your nationality is a fish, bat, and a goat, all three. And you can get protection. You can say you're LGBTQ, ZY, whatever. You can say my babies are not babies, they're thabies. And there's laws to protect that. But if you say you're an Israelite, all of a sudden, you're deemed a terrorist. Can you dig it? That means they, they know that though the key to you getting out of the bondage by which they invested in is actually when you figure this Bible out. And they say we have to keep them from that. We'll give them Islam. We'll give them Baptists. We'll give them Scientology. We'll give them Africanism, whatever. Give them anything. Hell, they're looking for something anyway. So give them that. And even though, like I said a long time ago, I was looking for the proper uh, liquid to quench my thirst for the answers that would solve the questions in my mind about why is it that we're suffering the way we're suffering. And I went through a myriad of different things. Africanism, Islam, I went through those. I studied those things a little bit. And although they were wet, because it poured a little bit of understanding here and there, they were wet, but they did not quench my thirst. When I need, when my thirst needs to be quenched, don't give me soda. That's not going to quench my thirst. I have to have that clean glass of water. That's where the thirst gets cleaned up. And that's what the Bible did. So once I got to the Bible, I realized I hid it. And that's the reason why I didn't look no further past the Bible. That was 30 years ago, 31 years ago. I didn't need to look past this no more. I figured this is it. I got it. This is how I'm rolling. Y'all all right? 
But our, the enemies don't want us to have this. So they'll give you anything. Read that again. Psalms chapter 83, verse 3. Now, remember these points that I'm making, and I'm saying a lot. And as the class go on, when I start bringing up certain things, try to reverberate if, in your mind. Try to, uh, you know, the, the light to come on. I, I, you, know, you know how we do. We've, you know, these connections will be made. So as we go through these lessons, you will, you, you will begin to, uh, to remember certain things that were said in the opening. Read it again. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people. They, the nations, have taken crafty counsel against the people of God. Come on. And consulted against thy hidden ones. And they have consulted against thy hidden ones. That's the part that I wanted. Hidden ones. So when I was making a point about us standing up, we, cannot, we can no longer really live as hidden people. We cannot live in the shadows. That's the point I was making. Can't live in the shadows. God's people was meant to be on the hilltop. God's people, the scriptures say that you don't light a candle and put it underneath a bushel. You put it on the top for the whole world to see. Y'all dig it? That's what Christ said. So we are not to be hidden. But as you can see, our enemies don't want us to be illuminated. They don't want us to be seen. They don't want us to enjoy each other's company. They don't want us to, to have that umbrella, that atmosphere of righteousness. They don't want us to have that because the more, the more that we attain to righteousness, the closer our God gets to us. And the closer our God gets to us, the quicker and the more certain the kingdom is coming. So it's a very real reason why they do what they do. Because the longer we stay in sin, the longer we stay in evil, the longer they stay in power, and the longer this earth stays under out-of-course action. The earth needs righteous rulers so that the earth can rejoice, so that the trees can rejoice, so that the birds and the animals can rejoice, so that the people can rejoice. But Satan don't want that. We're going to read about that too. Y'all all right? Uh, read. They have said, come, let us cut them off from being a nation. Let us cut them, the hidden ones, off from being a nation. Israel, come on. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. That the name of Israel may be no more in our minds. So if, to, to let you know how slick our enemies are, if you, once you come into this truth, and you're learning this truth. If you ever come to a point where you don't care about knowing that you're Israel, that means Satan has gotten into you and what we're reading is actually happening to you right now. At that moment. If you ever come to a point where you say, you know what, I don't need to be in, quote, you might even call it that Israelite stuff. Once you begin to entertain that, you are fulfilling what the enemies wanted and don't even know it. Think about it. When we go out to camp, we try to tell them that they're the Israelites and they reject it. They are literally operating up underneath the perfect plan to destroy them of what we just read. Read that verse again. Verse 4. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. Our enemies said that. Our enemy said, come and let us in our consultation. Because it said they have consulted against our hidden ones. In their consultation, in their crafty counsel, all of that. Let us endeavor to keep them from recognizing that they are the Israelites. So the moment you begin to start to entertain what we're reading, you have actually fell into the trap of what their whole plan was about. Meditate on that, what I just said. Whenever we come to a point where we are comfortable not calling ourselves the Israelites, we are fulfilling what our enemies set, us to, set for us. It's heavy, ain't it? Read. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. That the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. And their remembrance. And be no more in our remembrance. 
So they want us to forget that. That's what the breaking in period was about in slavery. That's what the educational system is about. The history lies, all of that stuff that's going on in school. Television, false media, false imagery, religion, you name it. It's all designed to keep us baffled, keep us in a sense of obscurity, confusion, like balls floating around in a vacuum, not knowing where we're supposed to be. That's the confusion that our, that our enemies want us to stay in. And whenever we find ourselves comfortable in that, instead of being what God actually made us, and we relegate ourselves to the shadows, we embrace being hidden. That's when we have lost it. But it is the job of those who are still enlightened to have a reaching hand to reach your brothers and sisters. Even if you see that they near slipped, reach out to them. Bring those brothers back home. Bring those sisters back home. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. That's what we as men supposed to do. That's what we as women supposed to do. When we see our, our brothers and sisters waning a little bit. Don't let them fall, because had it been you, you would want somebody to rescue you. Y'all all right? What was the other scripture that I asked for? Isaiah 52? Yes. What's the beautiful garments? Yes, read it. Isaiah chapter 52 and verse 1. Awake, awake. Yes. Put on thy strength. I needed strength. that right there. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O hidden ones. Put on thy strength, O thou who sleepeth. Put on thy strength, those who have been the victim of the nation's conspiracy. Put on thy strength. Wake up. Go to Romans 13 and 11. I'm still talking about being hidden, and it's time for us to come from the shadows. Romans chapter 13. In verse 11, and that knowing the time. And that, knowing the time. Go ahead. That now it is high time. That today it is high time. To awake. High time means that the sun is straight up in the sky. It's noontime. Are we supposed to still be in the bed sleeping when it's noontime? There's a reason why the Bible is using that word there. It's saying that we should have been awake. He didn't say uh, for it is six in the morning, it said it is high time that you should awake out of sleep because we've been put to sleep by our enemies. The Lord said the punishment of Israel, give me a uh, lamentation. I know I got you running in a few spots, so hold those two that you got for me, yes, Isaiah, Romans, and I need lamentations for 21 and 22. Because it's time for us to stand up and be counted. But there is a war in doing that. Y'all all right? There's a war. There's a war. It's a spiritual war. And the spiritual war is much greater than a physical war. And I know people don't really understand that. But I could just say something to, to easily make it easy to understand. A, a, a spiritual war... If you can indoctrinate a whole people to hate themselves, you do not have to lift up a gun. You do not have to lift up anything. You could just say, let them be. Because our spirits have been turned around to actually hate each other. Can you dig it? Read. What you, you got it for me? Yes, sir. Come on. Limitations, chapter 4, verse 21. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwellest in the land of Uz. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. The cup of the cup of destruction, the cup of captivity, the cup of castration, the cup of lynchings, the cup that was dished out to us is going to be dished out to them. Now. When it comes to reap what you sow, because Israel is going to be involved in a lot of this when the Lord gives us that power. That's recorded in Ezekiel. But they raped our women. We're not going to be doing that. 
Y'all follow me, because that's against the law. Okay, they raped our women, but the nations are going to rape them. That's in the book of Isaiah. It said, and their wives shall be ravished. And it's talking about the nations are going to rape and go crazy on Esau. Okay? The most high means that we're going to stay in righteousness. Whatever, whatever judgments and whatever levels of punishment that the Lord said that we're going to levy against the nations for what they did to us is all going to be in righteousness. The Lord said, let a two-edged sword be in their hand. He said, let the high praises of God be in our mouth and a two-edged sword in our hand to execute vengeance upon the nations. That's going to be in righteousness. That sword is the same thing as that rod of iron in the book of Revelation. And he said, and you shall break the nations with a rod of iron because they're going to be resistant to, to keeping the commandments of the Most High. Esau is going to get wiped out. When this whole thing go down and it's over with, he's going to be gone. There's going to be no more of him, period. That's going to be a hell of a time, ain't it? The nations is going to be here. But Esau, once his, once his job is completely finished, even in their own records, they said, for she is the only neighbor of the Israelites, meaning Edom, Esau, who was not given any promise of mercy from God. So that means every last one of them, like the book of Obadiah said, and there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau, for the Lord hath spoken it. So there's no getting out of that. But the nations are going to go into captivity because they're going to have to learn how to keep the laws of the most. They're going to have to, they're going to learn how to keep the Feast of Tabernacles and all of that. They're going to learn these laws because that's the way it was supposed to be from the beginning. When we fell from that, the Lord said, okay, since you don't want to follow me, I'm going to put you under your enemies until you learn. And when you learn and you're ready to obey, then I bring you out of it and I'll put you back in your seat where you belong. And a lot of us, Two-thirds of us are so brainwashed, we're never going to make it back. So two-thirds of our people will be destroyed. That's a scary situation, ain't it? They're going to be destroyed. And when I say destroyed, they are not coming back. When they get destroyed, they are done. That's that, that's that second death that Revelation is talking about, okay? Uh, and I know I got you going over a lot of spots, so... You was wanted, that it? Was that it on that? No, you wanted twenty one and twenty two, right? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Lamentations chapter four, verse twenty one. Rejoice and be glad, O daughter of Edom, that dwelleth in the land of Uz. That dwelleth in the land of Uz. Come on. The cup also shall pass through unto thee. The cup of trembling, the cup of fear, the cup of destruction, the cup of loss of children, the chup, the the the, the, the cup of being bereaved of your family, the cup of having your wives taken away from you. Having your husbands killed, all that's going to come to them because it happened to us. Go ahead. Thou shalt be drunken. You shall be drunken also, Edom. Go and, ahead. And shall make thyself naked. And you will be brought down naked, meaning everybody's going to know your shame. They're going to know all about him. As, as this world continues to move on, the wicked will be revealed for exactly for what he is, and the whole earth is going to turn against him. Read. The punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished. The punishment of our iniquity. That's the 22nd verse yes, there. Yes, sir. The punishment of our iniquity is accomplished, meaning we paid the price. Go ahead. O daughter of Zion. O daughter of Zion, the nation of Israel. Come on. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. God will no longer, will no more carry us away into captivity. Can you imagine what this was like when the prophets was writing uh, in the scriptures and was writing about the empires like Daniel's? Daniel was in the Babylonian captivity. Habakkuk was in those captivities back then and all of the minor prophets. And they were upset, rightfully so, like Ezra was upset. How long, if we be thy people, O Lord, when are we going to get rule? If the world was made for our sake, how long shall this endure? They all wanted to know that. When shall these things be? The disciples, they all asked the question. The apostles, Lord, art thou come at this time to restore the kingdom of, to Israel? We all wanted to get the kingdom. But even back then, when like Daniel wrote about the empires all the way up to now, 
and the other prophets wrote about it. They knew what time period they were living in, and they knew that there was more captivities after that one. Could you imagine that? They're keeping the commandments of God in the Babylonian captivity, knowing that the Persians was coming next, knowing that another empire, Greek, was coming after that, Rome was coming after that. They knew that there was more coming. So the kingdom was not at the doors. But yet they still stayed faithful. Here we are. We are in the last deal, brothers and sisters. There's no more captivity after this. So we made it. Yes, we were those spirits back there during the time of Babylon and during the time of Persia. I want to say that's another subject. But I asked somewhere along this lesson, I'm going to show I'm going to show you all that we've been here many times. And we are here again. Like I said, just to make it easy to understand with just one verse. When Moses said, uh, and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Moses was actually speaking to the people in Mount Sinai at that time. At the wilderness, he was literally speaking to a generation of people. Everybody in here knows that none of the people that Moses literally spoke to at that time went, on cap went into captivity on ships. Can I get a witness? So how did that come to pass? They were going to come back generations later. Because Moses didn't say, your sons will go into captivity. He said, and the Lord shall bring you. That's what thee means, T-H-E-E. -E. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So it literally meant that. So when that generation was on the scene in the 1600s, the 1400s, that's when Moses' words came to pass. The other parts of the prophecies where Moses talked about the siege that was going to happen to us. When Rome came in and destroyed us, that generation that Moses was talking to was there also. And you shall be led into captivity under all nations. Y'all know the scripture I'm talking about? Luke 21, 20 to 24. That's the scripture I'm talking about. Luke, the, uh, the Most High was making it clear that that same generation that Moses spoke to in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, they were on the scene because right after that, it's in, in Luke, it says, that these be the days of vengeance, um, that all things which were written may be fulfilled. The things that was written was written in Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter. And it is going to be fulfilled right now in this generation. And woe be unto you that have young children. Woe be unto you that have, uh, what does it say, that, that are with child. And that gives suck in those days. Because it was going to happen then. So what happened then? The siege that Moses wrote about, that we, shall be, that we should turn and eat our own children, and we will be starving and all of that. That happened to that generation. So Moses wrote about it and said it then. That generation that Moses was speaking to didn't experience any of that. They just died in the wilderness. The only two that came out of that was Caleb and Joshua. Everybody else died. So according to Christianity, you would figure that, oh, no, that didn't happen. Yes, it did happen. They came back generations. The scriptures talk about that in the third and the fourth generation, they'll be back on this earth. That's why he said he would visit the sins of the fathers upon the children, upon the children's children until the third and the fourth generation. Because the third and the fourth generation is your great grandchildren and your great grandchildren, which is you. That's how that works. So when you come back, you're going to fulfill what was said when you was on the earth before. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. That's a little deep, but there's, I can cover that. You know, don't, don't, don't want anyone to go and fall off the horse. That's why I just wanted to give it to you on a simple level, okay? So the common sense is that when Moses said, and the Lord shall bring thee, he literally meant them. So I said all of that because when we was in the captivities in the Persia, when we was in the captivity in Babylon, captivity in the Persia, Greece, and Rome, that was us coming back in all those captivities all the way up to now. Now the Bible says what in that Lamentations? Lamentations chapter 4 verse 22. 
The punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished. All that ass whooping that we got. Generations of it. But the Lord says, what? The punishment of thy iniquity is accomplished. The punishment of your iniquity, our sins, is accomplished. The, he allowed Christ to die on the cross to redeem us from the curse. Now we have a chance to repent. And that's where we're at now. So he says, your punishment has been uh, accomplished. Go ahead. O daughter of Zion. O daughter of Zion, Israel. Go ahead. He will no more carry thee away into captivity. He will no longer carry, he will no more carry us away into captivity. This is it. This is it. There's no kingdom coming after this except the kingdom of God. This is what Re Revelation is about. The great dragon fought against the most high and the Christ and the angels. That's what's coming up now. And that's what he's trying to prevent. And Esau is measuring his time left by looking at the Israelite people. He said, the more of them that wake up, the closer my doom comes. So his objective is to keep us asleep. Because the more of them that wake up, that's, that, and that's the numbers being sealed up. And as it's becoming more and more sealed up, that means his doom is imminent. So what else would he do but try to keep you from this, that the name of Israel be no more in your remembrance? See how easy that is? Y'all all right? Yes, sir. Uh, read. He, so, yeah. he will visit thy iniquity, O daughter of Edom. He is going to bring, this, he's going to bring the destruction on Edom. He's going, he going to bring the payback, the reap what you sow. All of that is going to happen to Edom. Because we're going to be getting delivered. Okay? Now, what was I reading before that? That was Romans. Uh, let me just finish this, Bishop. Yes. He will discover thy sins. He will discover their sins against us. Now, I want to be very clear when it said that he will discover the sins of Edom. Edom's sin is not that he didn't keep the high holy days. That's, that's our responsibility. Edom's sins is not that he didn't keep the laws written in the five, you know, the, Mo, the law of Moses, sacrificing that, none of that. That's not the sin that he committed. The sin that he committed is written in the book of Obadiah. Let's read that. Obadiah, one, Obadiah the 10th verse. This is the sin that he committed. Obadiah chapter 1. Because only the people of God can commit the kind of sin that, was, that belonged to Israel. The, the, the ones that Moses told us that we had to keep, that pertains to Israel. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. That's what it says in Deuteronomy 1 and 1. Ain't no nations, ain't no other nations involved in that. So these, the Israelite people, are the ones that's responsible for keeping the laws of God. But what, what sins that Edom committed? It's not these. It's what we're about to read. Obadiah, verse 10. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob. That's the reason why he's going to pay. Because of what he did to us. Read it again. For thy violence against thy brother Jacob. Shame shall cover thee. Shame shall cover them. Shame shall cover the nations. Shame shall cover, shall cover Edom. Go ahead. And thou shall be cut off forever. And thou, Esau, Edom, shall be cut off forever. Now, is this ever, forever, ever? Jump down to the last, jump down to the verse that I want. Verse 18. 18. Yes, yes. Sir. Obadiah, verse 18. And the house of Jacob shall be a fire. And the house of Jacob, which is Israel, shall be a fire in the house of Joseph a flame. In the house of Joseph a flame. This is all 12 tribes. In the house of Esau for stubble. In the house of Esau for stubble. That's kindling wood to burn up things. Stubble. That's burnt wood. Read. And they shall kindle in them. And they shall kindle in them. And devour them. And devour them. Let's go and find out who the them is. And there shall not be any remaining of the house of Esau. For the Lord have spoken it. What kind of Christianity church can any of them go to to, dis, to disannul that? For the Lord have spoken it. That's it. That is it. You got to get rid of the Bible 
and still it ain't going to change nothing. Because the, the Most High's words don't have to be here in physical form. Once the Most High's word go out, it don't go out void. So you, you try to get rid of the Bible, the Most High is going to make Bibles appear anywhere. You're not going to get rid of this. He'll even, he'll even cause you to write them, copy them, and, and cause yourself to think that you're part of it. Like is what he did. He actually thought this book was for him. So, so now, where was I at before that? Romans 13. Yes. With the awakeness now. Romans. And then I want that Isaiah again. Yes, sir. Romans chapter 13 and verse 11. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. So now it is high time to awake out of sleep because we ain't going into captivity no more, brothers. This is, this is it. This is our time to stand up and be counted. Go ahead. For now is our salvation nearer than, we, than when we believe. That's right. Take your time. Read it again. You got it right when you, you slow down. For, for now is our salvation nearer. For than now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. It's at the doors, brothers and sisters. This is not the time to fall off. This is not the time to get weak and succumb to the enemy's tricks. This is not that time. Read. The night is far spent. The night is far spent. I'm talking about the noon time now. It says the night is gone. It's high noon. You should have been awake. Go ahead. The day is at hand. The day for us to stand up is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. Let us therefore, because of our awakening, let us get rid of sin. Let us get rid of evil. Let us get rid of backbiting and lust and, and temptations of of all kinds of filth. Let us cast that off. And let us put on the armor of light. And let us put on the armor, the protection of light. Let us put on the protection of God's commandments. That's how that goes. Y'all all right? So now let's go back to uh, Isaiah with the awake. Read. Tell them where you at. Isaiah chapter 52 and verse 1. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments. Put on your beautiful garments, and you look beautiful today with your beautiful garments. All praises to the Lord. The Lord gave us. This is our heritage. These things belong to us, and we relish in that. The hell with, with the, the hell with the fashions of this world. We relish in what God gave us. Let Israel rejoice in him that made him. Let us rejoice in our king. And our dress code, and our foods, and our customs, and our commandments, and our laws, and our history. Let us rejoice in those things. Read that again. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on your strength. This is not the time to be weak. Put on your strength and stand up and be counted as the people of God. Come on. Put on thy beautiful garments. Put on your beautiful garments. Come on. O Jerusalem. O Jerusalem. The holy city for henceforth. The holy city. Hold it. The holy what? The holy city. Did you hear that? The holy organization. City. The holy city. City, which means systems like we talked about at Tabernacles. The holy city. The different systems and factions, different departments, different sections all operate as a city. The holy city, the true city of God. You Israelites, read that again. Awake, awake, put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments. Put on your beautiful garments. O Jerusalem. O Jerusalem. The holy city. You are the true city of God. Holy means true. You are the true city of God. That's the reason why I say the people don't get to tell us nothing. The law going to go forth from Zion. We're going to set this whole earth back in order. Right. Come on. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Because we're going to do this Bible the way it's supposed to be done. That's setting the nation that's setting the nation of Israel back up the way it's supposed to be. And what we're going to do with that power, we're going to set this whole earth back up. That's the kingdom of heaven. 
That's when everything's going to rejoice. The birds are going to rejoice. Everything's going to rejoice. And you have to imagine how graceful the Lord is that we can even survive in this mess that we're in. That we can even, that we can even survive day to day with all this filth. You got people that's literally, you got two men looking at each other and talking about some let's get together as if one's a woman. And that's normal. They're trying to make that normal. Now they're trying to justify pedophilia. Yes. They're trying to justify, uh, uh, what else? There's some other stuff. Like I said, the Thabies, Elmer, they pretty much got that down. Lambler. Huh? Lambler. Oh, Lord have mercy. What is that? That's what oh, it is, bitch. Oh, Nambler. 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 That's it. Nambler. Nambler. Love, uh, North um, Nambler, North American Boy Love Association. Mm -hmm. Where, a grown man Where a grown man could actually have a little boy as his lover. Love Association. They're making that legitimate. That is pedophilia. That's it. They just want to make it legal. That's how, one of the ways they're going to make it legal. So all, that is, all of that is designed to put pressure on righteousness, to make you not want to be righteous. Here you are, the only one in your classroom that's got a, that's got a dress with fringes on. I'll just use that as an example. And you in this, and you in these classrooms, and everybody else is in tight jeans and this and that and the other, talking to the boys in the corner and all, and they're looking at you like, why do you just can't get along with us? Can't you just join us and get a, be a part of what we got? Look, I got boyfriend so-and-so. I got this, I got that. And look at you, you're just missing out on all kind of stuff. And you feel that pressure. And, and 25 out of 30 of them would be knocked up with a baby. No husband. Welfare. Hell, abortion, every damn thing else that's going to come out of that. But you don't see that part of it. All you see is the daggone glitz and the lies that they're showing you and telling you you're missing out. You better wake up. Uh, where we at? Uh, you want verse 2, Bishop? Yeah, where you at? Isaiah what? chapter 52 and verse 2. Yes. Shake thyself from the dust. Shake thyself from the dust. Go ahead. Arise. And, and sit down, O for, Jerusalem. For us to shake ourselves from the dust, shake ourselves from sin, shake ourselves from mediocrity, shake ourselves from being hidden, fearful, afraid to stand up for what you really are, that what God made you, shake yourselves from that. God did not make that. Our enemies created that spirit in us. And if we recognize that's the way we think, we need to recognize that this has to be overthrown. This mindset has to be overthrown with the word of God. Your mind has to be renewed with the word of God. If you find yourself comfortable outside of the realm of the Bible, the enemy has succeeded. Y'all all right? Yes, sir. So the point that I'm making, again, all of this is, was, did I get all my scriptures out? No, sir. Come on. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. O oh, captive daughter of Zion. O oh, captive, we are captivated by sin and evil and temptations. Captivated by that thing. It's time for us to break loose. Awake, awake, wake up. Why in the world is the Bible using terms like that? Because we are asleep. You don't tell a wake person to wake up. But they got this thing talking about some the woke. They got this woke movement. Them people ain't woke at all. Dead as hell. But the real woke is what we're talking about. To wake up means to be illuminated with God's laws. That's what it means to wake up. So when the Bible is telling us to wake up, it's telling us to put on that strength, the Bible, put on our customs, put on our heritage. Okay? Put on your, put on your history. When you talk about culture, you're talking about the Bible. This is culture. That mess that they talk about on television and, and your social media, that's not culture. Talking about some hip-hop culture. That's not culture. Culture tells you what to dress, how to dress, what to eat, what you shouldn't eat. Tell you who your enemies are, who not, who not, your, you know. It tells you how to set your families up. Understand that. Culture is your whole being. Tells you who your people are. Tell you what to eat, what laws that you have between each other, how to resolve differences, how to apply 
the commandments to each other, to keep the peace, to endeavor to keep the unity. That's culture. A constitution, if you will. That's culture. Tells you what to wear, how to dress, how to keep yourself. That's culture. That's the Bible. That's your strength. Put on thy strength. Read that again. Uh, Isaiah chapter 52 and verse 1. Awake, awake. Put on thy strength, O Zion. Put on thy beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. For henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake thyself from the dust. Shake o yourselves from ignorance. Shake yourself from slavery. Arise. Emancipate yourself from mental slavery. Go ahead. Arise and sit down, O Jerusalem. O Jerusalem, sit down and learn my Bible. Go ahead. Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck. Loose yourselves from the bands of sin that's around your necks, that's got us destroyed. That's Those bands that are around at our neck is what Deuteronomy 28, 48 was talking about. When it said that, and therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger, in thirst, and in nakedness, and he shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck until he have destroyed thee. So once we are destroyed, he took the physical chains off, and now we put on the mental chains. We put on the mental chains. Can we show the book? Did I give you the cover of the book? Yes, show that. This is what happened to us. This is what we read. It bust thy, even though it said neck there, but it's really talking about our minds. Because he took the chain, he said the yokes of iron will be on our necks until we are destroyed. So once we are destroyed, are you destroyed in your neck? Or are you destroyed? Where does, this, where does destruction take place at? In your mind. So once your mind is destroyed, this is indicative of what we're looking at here. This is what we have to break. Stand up to break this. Okay. Is that it on that? Loose thyself from the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. O captive. We captive in our minds. O captive daughter of Zion. Come on. Verse 3. For thus saith the Lord, ye have sold yourselves for naught. We have sold ourselves for nothing. You want to be, you want to be, you want to run with the crowd that's going nowhere but destruction. And you want to run away from what really belongs to you. Come on. And ye shall be redeemed without money. Because the Most High Christ died on the cross to redeem us. You didn't have to pay a fee for that. Okay, now, let's go now. So that's it. I got all my scriptures out, right? Yes, sir. For the moment. Yes, sir. All praise to the Lord. So now, I'm talking about us standing up and being counted. A while ago, I did a class called... The vision beyond obscured eyes, right? I'm trying to remember the full title. Um, and, it, and, that, that, and that class was about us having vision beyond the trickery. Because we've been blinded in this society. We've been blinded in this kingdom. We've been blinded to not know which way is up. We've been blinded. In terms of righteousness, we don't even know the difference between righteousness and wickedness. Now we're so messed up, we don't even care. So things are so bad now, it's almost impossible to look beyond the obscurity to actually see a vision that gets you out of bondage, mental bondage, like that image that we show. Yes, this is the uh, following God's vision that's beyond obscured eyes. Thank you, brothers. That was the class. So, we're not going to be able to do this if our, if our minds are completely obscured with a chain around it where we can't see anything beyond television. Because Esau says, I'm going to set all of that up so that you can live within my circumference of confusion. Don't be radical. Understand those words. Don't be radical to go outside of the hog pen that I put you in. Live in there. Conform to that. Conform to TikTok. Conform to Instagram. Conform to Facebook. Stay within the realm of the evil that I've shaped for you. 
Don't look beyond that. Because within that circumference of obscurity, you can't see anything but what's in there. And you will begin to uh, make everything conform to your thinking. As a man thinketh, everything that comes within his or her grasp will conform to go no further than their thinking. If their mind is, is in a particular realm, they will not think beyond that at all. Every word out of their mouths will be indicative of where their mind is. As a man thinketh, as a woman thinketh, that's what they become. So once they begin, once your enemies shape your reality, everything that you do is going to fit within that definition. And whenever you act outside of that, and those that put you in the box notice that you're operating outside the box, they say you're a radical, you're an extremist, you're a troublemaker. Who learned your mem? How did you get that? Who raised you? What school did you go to? This happened to me. What country were you born in? How did you get to know these things? And my schools was uh, set up by me to not allow you to think beyond what I shaped them to train you for. And here you are operating outside of my guidelines. Who, been you, who have you been talking to? You're radical. Some stuff, ain't it? Where we at? Uh, <laughs> oh, I got the scripture. Yeah, so I'm bringing up, put my, put my thing back up there again, the thumbnail. The obscured eyes. This is not today's show, but this is what I was talking about. So it is about us following God's vision that is beyond obscured eyes. But if our enemies are, uh, you can take it off. If our enemies are hell-bent, and I use that word seriously, or hell-bent on making sure that our eyes stay obscured, we can never see a vision beyond the circumference of having us intellectually trapped into thinking in the box and not outside of the box. Y'all all right? Okay. Uh, now, like I said, our eyes today have been distorted through the lenses of obscurity. I'm dealing with stand up and be counted. Put that thumbnail up there so that they'll know what we're dealing with. This is the actual title. This is what we're dealing with today, and I'm getting ready to go into it. Okay? Stand up and be counted. Okay, this is what, this is what we're dealing with today, brothers and sisters. Okay, this is what we're talking about. So now, give me the book of the wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, verse 12. Because, again, we're, we're at the cusp of standing up on our own. We're on the cusp of standing up to be, count, to be counted as the people of God. We're on the cusp of being that city. That, 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 that beam of light that shineth in the dark places, what you was bringing out, Captain. You want to go ahead and bring that out and bring that out now? In uh, Peter's, right? Oh, the one in Psalms. Yes, read that. Mm -hmm. Yes, let's get that. Uh, Psalms 83 started verse 23. I'm sorry. 83, 23, verse 3. Psalms chapter 23 mm -hmm. and verse 3. He restored my soul. You know, Bishop was bringing it out earlier. He said that we done went through it. He's telling us that we've, we've been laboring. This is it. Read on. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. Now we understand who we are. That's what he was telling us. Stand. We're standing in righteousness. We're standing who we are. We're standing vindicated the people that we know who we are today. Read on. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness. And that's the path that we own. As to gather in the 12. As to bring our people home through righteousness. Showing them that they have a great history. And when we do that, we're showing them that we're, we can become great parents. We can become great leaders in our communities. We can become great fathers and mothers and have wonderful children. Read on. For his name's sake. For his, to bring him glory. 
I, I was reminded when Bishop was doing the class, you know, uh, it came to me what it said about Moses. He said that, Mo, that uh, was, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but he said that my people may come and worship me. And that's our calling, that we have to go back before the Lord. We don't. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And that's what's here. And Bishop was saying something a while ago. He was talking about, you know, using it in the pig slop. But then he began to name different things like TikTok and other different vices that he was bringing out. We still in the pig slop. We still is not out. We still yet in the death of darkness. Read on. I will fear no evil. Uh huh. For thou art with me. The most high is with us now, Israel. We have the most high on our side. That's our strength. All of our help coming from the Lord. Read on. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. And that takes me back to Bishop's point. That's all we need to do is stand with the most high. Stand with, stand with the prophets of God, and we're going to be okay. That's all I had, Bishop. All praise to the most high. So, yes, that's what we got to do. We have to stand on the Lord. Um, Wisdom of Solomon. We're going to read uh, chapter 4 and verse 12. And the reason why I'm bringing this out, because, again, I want to point out about how it is the objective of our enemies to keep us in a state of obscureness and confusion where we don't know which way is up, where, where we can't determine what's right and wrong. Okay? We've just been programmed to be consumers. That's not what God put. If we are the jewels of God. How in the world have we turned into the degenerate plant of a strange vine unto the Lord? That's how far we've fallen. The Lord said, I have planted thee a noble vine, nobility. He said, and I brought you upright. And then he turned around and he said, but whoa, how then art thou turned into the degenerate plant? Degenerate. So you're talking about generations as opposed to be bringing you forth. But to degenerate means to go down. To degenerate means to get worse and worse and worse. And then the Lord said they've gotten so bad, they've become a strange vine, meaning I don't even recognize them. How art thou become a strange vine, a strange plant unto me? We're not even recognizable. That's how, that's how confused and obscure our direction is. And our enemies love it. Our young girls. Parents trying to teach them the proper way so that their lives are not jacked up. Our young men, same thing, trying to teach them how to be proper husbands, to not be running around doing all kind of craziness and deal properly when they get old enough to marry. That's, 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 that's the beginning of sanctification. But what does the world say? No, don't listen to them. Do this instead of that. And nobody cares once you mess up. We got, we got, count, we got stories of outside enemies that sought to influence women. I'll just use that because the, the women are the big targets sought to influence the women, got the woman on one of their quote-unquote YouTube pages and was saying, oh, that Israelite stuff, such and such, and she's just going all against it, all against Israel. Follow me now. She was, when she was here, there was righteousness. She had some trouble trying to hook up with the man she wanted because, you know, the man wanted to deal with, with what he wanted to deal with. I mean, that's his choice. But instead of her continuing to work on herself, that the Lord would have provided, y'all understand? He would have found her. But she got impatient and went and went to one of these enemies out here. I don't even like to call their names because it's, it, it's irrelevant. They're all going to be dust to dust. They're not, they don't really mean anything to me. But he got her up on the on the camera smiling <laughs> and talking against us calling us a black cult and all types of stuff understand that and was and he was lacing her up for christianity follow my story now getting her yes a christian this and be christianity john three sixteen for god all of that you follow me and he was all in her corner because as long as she's out of this ring out of this culture, you follow me, 
Long as she's out of the right thing, the nations are happy. So he was busy bigging her up, bigging her up. Then she fell out of that. Now she's on this thing called OnlyFans selling pictures of her ass. Somebody, whatever. I don't even know how to think what to do. Send money. What is it like? These cash apps or something? Send pictures, doing this, doing that. And men be, ooh, click, 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 click. That's what she's been reduced to. The reason why I bring that up is because now that she's into that, where is the people that said they cared for her soul? They're not even looking for her now. Get, and I've mentioned her by name and mentioned the people that did it to her. All groups of evil nookers that hated this gospel. And I said, well, what about the sister that's, that broke away, as y'all say, just get out of IUIC such and such. She's gone, and she's in total wickedness now, and ain't none of those so-called righteous nookers and the Edomites that sided with her with her with his talk show, none of them are going after that girl to try to save her soul. Y'all hear me? That's a tragedy. That's a tragedy. Travesty. Horrible. Horrible. Um, Wisdom, of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4 and verse 12. For the bewitching of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest. For the bewitching, the trickery of sin, the bewitching. What does it mean to bewitch? To deceive. To bewitch you means to make you think it's one thing and it's actually something else, which is much more dangerous. Here's an example of bewitching. Hey, man. I got this good Chiba Chiba. Huh? And it's going to make you feel smooth. It's going to mellow you out. You all tense. Have some of this, brother. Have some of this, sister. It'll loosen you up. You're too tense. Look at me. I'm groovy. <laughs> Try some of this. The bewitching is the way he said it or the way she said it. Here, put these pants on, sister. Look, look at me. Look at how, how all the boys look at me and, and dream about me when they go home. That could be you. Bewitching. And you'd be like, man, I want to, damn, I want to experience that. When they grow up, both sides, the person that took the, took the dope, the cheaper cheaper, which turns into other things. And the, the pants goes into other things as well. Then a, a behavior comes with that. Attitude comes with that. And then it leads you down the path of destruction. So the bewitching is the cheaper cheaper that was given to you. And he bewitched you by telling you that it's smooth. It's all that. Just giving you that Coke 45 type of commercial, Billy D. Williams. Huh? It works every time. <laughs> huh? You get to think about that smooth. Huh? The bewitching is you don't know where it's going to end up. Now you're an alcoholic. Now you can't keep a job. Now your family left you. Now your children don't want to be around you. Because when daddy drinks, he punches and he beats and he does this and he does that. But the bewitching was giving it to you on the low. But it ended up turning out to be a dragon that destroyed you. The little drugs that they tell you, hey, this is going to loosen you up. Next thing you know, you're hooked. Now you're hooked. And that chemical addiction is horrible. When you're chemically addicted to drugs... That means regardless of how you think, your body is saying that if I don't get that fix, I'm going to introduce pain. So they have to get it. Y'all ever seen P. 
people on drugs like that? And when they need that fix, do you think that they, it started out that way? They were pure in the beginning, and somebody said, hey, Vera, got that cheaper, cheaper. Huh? And slid it to him. And they took it. They said, how do you feel? Oh, I feel great, man. Huh? That's the first deal. Huh? And you've been like, like some of the old heads. They said, man, when, that, when you first hit it, that bell is rung. How many of y'all know what I'm talking about? I don't know personally, but I've, I worked at the hospital, so I just get all them stories. And seen them had to deal with them. Y'all all right? Hey, Bishop, it's the best thing they ever had. And, and then they're chasing that and, thing and they, for and the they rest chase, of That's what they call They chase that high. They chase yep. that, and they never get it again. So whenever you can't get that bell rung, that's what they literally call it. They say having your bell rung. When that thing hit that bell the first time, and every, every high trip, they can never reach it. So they're constantly trying to get it. But when you first took it, you didn't need it, but they slid it to you on the low. This is going to make you feel this way. It's going to make you feel that way. And then you end up taking it. And, I mean, I've seen, I've seen girls in, the commun in, in my neighborhood in Harlem when I was in Harlem, thick-bodied girls, full fit. You know how to mean. And when that damn crack and that stuff get to them, that thing shrinks them. They scare you to have their eyes get sucked in. Yo, it's a scary, scary. I'm like, yo, that's so and so. It's that bad. And that is just the, that's just one faction. But all sin and evil has the same path to lead you to destruction. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Read. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 4, and verse 12. For the bewitching of naughtiness doth obscure things that are honest. So the bewitching, the trickery of sin, it, what it obscures makes it unclear, makes the Bible, that's the things that are honest, the Bible. The Bible becomes unclear once you start dabbling in sin. Now all of a sudden you can't understand what we're talking about. Brothers and sisters have come to a brother or another sister that's on the verge of falling out the truth. And, and because they're involved in sin so deeply, you're reading scriptures to them. You're trying to give them examples. And they don't see it. Because the sin is constantly blocking their senses. They have been, they've, they've played with sin so much, they can't even adapt to what you're showing them out the scriptures. That's scary. Y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Read that again. I'm going to move a little faster. Yes, sir. For the bewitching of naughtiness does obscure things that are honest. Does obscure the Bible. That's what's honest. Go ahead. And the wandering of concupiscence does undermine the simple mind. And the wandering of concupiscence. Concupiscence is evil sexual sins. Us playing with porn, playing with TikTok, playing with Instagram, all that filth that's up there, if you play with it, it's going to get you. Because you're wandering around, and then every time you wander around in it, it plants more seeds in your head. It plants more seeds in your spirit. The more you dabble with it, the more you will realize it's harder to break away from it. You'll be like, I got it. I can handle it. But you, you, but you always find yourself going back to it. Because it's grabbing you harder and harder and harder. I remember I saw a brother was telling me that his addiction, this was many years ago. He knew that he had went over the deep end when he was in his room on his computer. And he's married. Y'all all right? And he had all kinds of windows when, you know, when one window lead to this, lead to that, lead to this, you have like all, you have like 20 windows open on your computer, going from porn site to, you know, the different things. And the wife was about to walk into the room. And he was like, oh, shh. 
He's trying to take the mouse and click all the X's to get rid of them. Y'all all right? That's when he knew. He said, damn, this thing's got me. It, it took that to, for him to realize that he was being sucked in. He said, I got 20. I'm up there trying to click out 20 boxes of filth. But notice, before she walked in, he was deep in it. You follow me? Without thinking about nothing, the world outside disappeared. I'm encapsulated in this thing. It's me and my computer. And we got it going on. But all of a sudden, boom, the door clicked. Or walks into the room, and all of a sudden, you get a glimmer of sense. Of like, oh, sh well, I ain't even supposed to be doing this. And you find yourself clicking, trying to get rid of all those X's. And while you're doing that, you realize, you realize, you see how sick you are at that moment. But that doesn't happen to everybody. Sometimes nobody gets to walk into the room. Sometimes you're fully in it, and it will just completely take you out. Y'all hear me? Uh, so it says, and the wandering of concupiscence doth undermine the simple mind, the mind that's not studying. The mind that don't communicate with their brothers. The mind that doesn't communicate with their sisters. The mind that doesn't study. The mind that doesn't get together. Let's study. Let's get together. Let's do this. Let's do that. That sensual, these are they that separate themselves kind of mind. I'm alone. I'm going to do my own thing. That's the kind of mind that gets trapped in stuff like this. Being your brother's keeper is about keeping our brothers and sisters from falling into these temptations here. We say that in the Lord's Prayer, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us from evil. We say that. Deliver us from temptation. There's a temptation there. How will you be delivered from it if you don't have your brothers and sisters? How would you be delivered from it if you don't have your congregation? How would you be delivered from it if you are not involved in the unity that we are all supposed to endeavor to keep? You're going to get caught. The wandering of concupiscence doth undermine the simple mind. Shalom, Israel. This is Bishop Nathaniel. I want you to know that you can view all our Sabbath classes live on IUIC TV. That's right. I said on IUIC TV. Download the app today. Shalom. Oh, give me Thessalonians, 2 Thessalonians, because I'm still dealing with Bewitching of naughtiness, bewitching of naughtiness, and the wandering of concupiscence. Is it written in another part of the Bible? Yes. Uh, 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 10. I actually was going to start with 8, but let me just start with 10. 10 verse. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Uh, read verse 9. Verse 9. 2 and verse 9. Yes. Even him. Whose coming is after the working of Satan. Even Esau, who is the mystery of iniquity. That's what this chapter is going into. He is the, the mystery of iniquity means the man of sin that everybody seems to be confused about. They don't know who this man of sin is. The man of sin is Esau. He's the vessel of God's wrath because he is the vessel of sin. He is the, he is the man, he is the mystery of iniquity. Iniquity is sin. He is the mystery of sin. Who is the devil? He gonna write. He gonna write movies. Some of Omen, and 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 uh, the Final Conflict. These different demon movies, the Good Son and the the Evil Boy, or whatever these different movies that they got. With the little white boys running around with three sixes in their head and all that. And you think that's the you think that's the only Satan? No, the man of sin. That's the Satan that the Bible speaks of, the physical counterpart. So you can understand. There's a spiritual demon, Satan, but the spiritual demon, Satan, has its people or has his people. His people are these people that we call white. His people, Satan's people, is the Edomites. And the Edomites or the children of Esau will influence black, Hispanics, all of us to join in on his team to bring more wickedness into this earth, to oppress, exactly, to oppress the righteous. So the people in your classroom that look just like you, 
will be agents of Satan. People that are sitting in the congregation that look just like you will be agents of Satan, will be agents of the man of sin, the mystery of iniquity. We have to be on guard all, all fronts so that we can endure and get the kingdom. Read. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders mm -hmm. and with all deceivableness. With well, all powers and lying wonders. That's, the, that's that technology. That's them videos. That's the music. That's the movies. That's all levels of quote-unquote entertainment which cap which capsulate your brain into evil and sin. And you wander in that concupiscence, and it undermines the simple mind, the mind that don't study. Uh, read. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. Undeceiv and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness. In them that perish. In them that die. Go ahead. Because they receive not the love of the truth. Because they receive not the love of God's commandments, because they were bewitched. Go ahead. That they might be saved. That they might be saved. So the only way that you're going to be saved is not to allow yourselves to be bewitched by of naughtiness and stay away from wandering of concupiscence and furthermore stay away from being deceived of sin. That's what the deceivableness of unrighteousness is talking about. Deceivableness means deceit and unrighteousness is sin. The Bible says and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Why? Because they receive not the love of the truth of the commandments that they might be saved. So we have to be vigilant and stand up against this. Standing up. And there is a whole society that's trying to keep us bewitched trying to keep us deceived, and trying to keep us wandering in concupiscence and unrighteousness and naughtiness. We have to understand that. We have to be ready to put on our armor of light, like the scriptures say. Let us put on our armor of light. Armor is clothes or protective wear for you to fight against the fiery darts of the devil. That's in Ephesians. We have to fight against spiritual wickedness in high places. That's what this is talking about with all power and lying wonders. That's, that's wickedness in high places. That's what's working on you, on your cell phones, on your computers, and the conversations on your jobs, all of that. All of that is wickedness from high places that's designed to keep your mind in evil and wickedness and sin. Oftentimes, me and Deacon Asaph, we used to work together in New York in the hospital. And when we go to lunch, there would be others that would come in, and all they want to do is talk about filth. Naked this, girls behind that, basketball, football, baseball. I said, man, where's the, where's the conversation for grown men? Me and Asaph would get up and go to another section and read the scriptures. Then a nook will come in but find us. What? Y'all reading the Bible? Man, y'all need some Hennessy. Negro said that. Y'all dudes reading the Bible? Man, y'all need some Hennessy. <laughs> huh? Now, some weak-minded persons will feel embarrassed. Because someone said that. Damn, man, he caught us reading the Bible. He going to tell somebody that we're reading the Bible. And they're going to look at us like we're strange. Well, the scriptures talk about that too. Count it not. Don't worry about that. Stay here. Because there's a kingdom coming for those who are steadfast in this gospel. Uh, now, give me wisdom of Solomon. Wisdom of Solomon 5. Uh, verse 4. So what am I bringing out? I wanted to just reflect real quick about, like I said, I'm going to be mentioning things that's going to take us back to stuff that I said earlier. I was making the point that it's time for us to stand up and be counted. I'm making the point that, that the nations and our enemies don't want us to stand up 
They want us to take a regressive stance and lean back and not be f and not stand up as men and women to illuminate who we really are. They want us to remain hidden. They want us to play the background. So that's why I was reading that in Psalms. They have consulted against our hidden ones. So our the lesson that we're talking about is for us to stand outside of that. Is to go is to go against their effort to keep us hidden, to go against their efforts to keep us in sin and evil. We have to stand against that. The scriptures say, "Who will rise up for me against the evildoers?" That's the spirit that we have to come with. Okay. Uh, so, what am I dealing with? Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5 and verse 4. So, we are talking about us standing up and being counted because we are the people of God. Read. We fools accounted his life madness. We fools accounted the fools of all of the enemies of Israel. Rather, it's, the, it's, it's including the nations and it's also including the wicked of our people, the one that want to give you the drugs. Amen. Try some of this. They're the ones that's trying to destroy our mission and our vision beyond the obscured eyes that the society has given us. Read that again. We fools account to his life madness. We fools, because they realize that God is going to deal with us anyway. And as, and as the Lord is going to increase us, their efforts to keep us uh, in bondage is going to weaken. So as they see us continuing to rise and stand up that what God wants us to be, they're going to realize that all of their endeavors have come to nothing. And they're going to say within themselves, we fools accounted his life or their lives madness. Look at him reading the Bible. Look at her with that skirt on. Look at him with them fringes. Look at him talking about he don't want to go out and, and, and on, on Friday night and, 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 and just got paid. No. Look at what you're missing. So-and-so has been asking about you. Her butt is even bigger this year. Somebody might say that to you. You'd be like, so? I said, what the hell's wrong with you? You done, you done turn gay? And then you feel like, oh, man, damn, why you want to say that? Y'all feel me? Temptations. Read. We fools account to his life madness. We fools with all of the work that we tried to use to bring them back into sin, with all of the wandering of concupiscence that we tried to put in their way, with the deceit of sin, with the bewitching of naughtiness, all of these things we tried and we failed. And because we failed, we say to ourselves, meaning our enemies, they say what? And his he en said, we fools... We Accounted his life madness. They accounted our lives as madness. Go ahead. And his end to be without and honor. The, and they counted our end to be without honor. They figured that we're not going to get honor from being steadfast in this gospel. Go ahead. How is he numbered among the children of God? How is he and she numbered among the children of God? Stand up and be counted. How is it that they're standing up? and being counted when all of the works that we did to shut them down. They operated in defiance and stood against our efforts to destroy them. Y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Now read the first verse. Verse uh, Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, verse 1. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness. That's what it's going to take. We got to stand in great boldness, not scared. Not leaning back in great boldness because we have the truth. Go ahead. Before the face of such as have afflicted him. We have to stand in great boldness in front of those who wish for our harm. We have to stand in great boldness in the face of those who want to see us destroyed. Go ahead. And made no account of his labors. And we, the enemies, didn't make no account of our labors. They said, oh, they're not going to get anywhere. Go ahead. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear. Because there's a, there's, a, there's a hunger that you have to have in this truth. You have to have the vision. You have to have that, that, that tenacity to never give up. You have to have that forceful warrior spirit in this gospel. 
to fight against the tricks of the devil in righteousness. You got to have that spirit within you. Because this, this, the evil is meant to take us out. Now I'm going to segue into some stuff that I want to show y'all. Us fighting for righteousness. Us fighting through temptation. Us fighting when we did not, when the real trials came. IUIC has a story to tell. Are y'all all right? IUIC in its beginning years, y'all heard about the first school that we had. When I say the first school, I'm talking about the first actual school, which, is, which was a school in Brooklyn, 1088 Nostrand Avenue. Y'all all right? Before that, we were in, uh, we was in the sister's house in Long Island. Then we went, to uh, uh, Bishop's uh, basement. And that's when this toilet started getting broken because too many butts on a house toilet ain't going to work too well. Time for us to get a building. Y'all all right? So then <laughs> we got the building. We got the 1088 school. Now, uh, Kaj, you got my pictures? Let's start rolling them. Now, what I want to do, I want to explain what y'all are seeing here. Now, I don't, don't show it yet. When we went, because why am I bringing this up? I'm showing you that when trials come up, you can't cow down. When temptations to fall comes your way, that's when you have to find that inner strength to push. At the time that I'm about to speak on, we did not know where we were going to go. You feel me? We had to rely on our faith. And the thing about trials, trials causes you to reassess your ability. Y'all feel me? Whenever you're going through some, some tough times, that's when you have to do what they call some introspection. And look to try to find out what strengths do you have? What's inside you that can help you get past this hurdle? And being that we were not, we were not in Bishop's basement where you had like a few families. Now we're actually in our first school, 1088 Brooklyn, Northern Avenue. We're there. And um, we were there. And let's say, I think it was about maybe 75 people. Uh, we had, show the tape. Now, now you can start, show the, start showing the pictures. This right here is the, the stage area where the leadership table would, would sit. Y'all all right? The, what you're looking at is when we left. We had to leave. And I'm going to tell you that story as this is going down. All right? This was the, so these are the walls. That's the side walls. Go ahead. That's all in the front area, the leadership area, as, as we would call it. Go click on through. This is just the school. So I'm just taking pictures. And let me tell you the reason why I was doing this, because I did not want them to say that we tore the place up when we left. So these were the proofs that we left it intact. Okay. As you can see, the little heater there. Uh, so that's what the, that, that one air conditioner was trying to cool that whole spot. You know that didn't work out well. But go ahead. That was a refrigerator that we had in the back for the food. Uh, go ahead. Click on. A little freezer there. This is a very small school. Like I said, 75 people. Okay. That was a table. I guess the security, you know, would, would do, the, uh, do the search there. So it was very, very, uh, what's the word? Very basic. Very uh What's it? Nisus. Very um, beginning. Small beginnings. That's the front of the school. So we had that sign up. That's the gate. Do you see the gate? That's the entrance to get inside the school. Now, what, no, no, no. Don't. Let's, let's stay there for a minute. We ain't ready for the next one. What happened that caused us to leave here was that the landlord, black man, was outside and he's watching the people coming in. 
And he's standing across the street. Black folks know. You got to watch black people. He's standing and he's seeing heads and he's counting heads. And at that time, I think the rent was $700. That's almost unheard of in New York. $700 for that spot. We paid, and the thing is, we, the bishops, well, we were deacons at that time. We paid all the bills. The congregation didn't pay nothing. We, was, we, we paid for that. And the reason why I'm saying that is because we had to get it started. You feel me? So we, you know, our checks or whatever, and we collected and paid that. And uh, so he's standing across the street, and he sees the bodies coming in. He's seeing the heads coming in. He sees the women coming in, the men coming in, and all of this, cars going up and down the street. He thinks to himself, there's a lot of people going up in there. I could raise this rent. And we was on a month-to-month deal. So in, I don't know how, the, how it works. I think, I think it's all over. You get 30 days, you know. So next 30 days, he said, I'm raising your rent. And he raised it to $1,300 due on the next month. He doubled it. Y'all hear me? Here we are with a congregation of people. We are the leadership. Responsibility falls on us. All of a sudden, the, 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 the thought is we ain't going to have a school for these brothers and sisters. And families are coming and trying to get themselves together. Sisters trying to get themselves together. And the nuka wants to act funky. And he was demanded at that thing. I want it so and so. Trials purifies. Trials causes you to dig down and look for those strengths that you didn't even know you had. Can I get a witness? When you're faced with some adversity, you, you find things that you didn't know you had. You, you, you come up with strengths that you didn't know you had because everything else, all your confusion is out there. See, you can think clear when confusion leaves. When you're left with raw reality, that's when the real you comes down and have a seat with you. Have a little talk with you. The real you sit down with yourself and say, okay, what we gonna do? Now you gotta start doing an inventory on what's in here. Now remember, it's a, it's a panel of deacons and the elders. We didn't call them bishops at the time. And the elders. We're faced with a situation. Can't stress the body. Don't want to. So what we going to do? Y'all all right? So Bishop says, we're not giving this guy no damn $1,300. This is wicked as hell. I said, we with you. Immediately, we said, we got to look for another place. Now, you know how hard it is to just find Another place just like that? When we went to search for this place here, this didn't just pop up. That's the man that he knows what I'm talking about, Officer David. We had to put some real work in to find property like this, to find other properties that, uh, well, in New York we had, you know, other teams to deal with that. But I use this as an example on the work you have to go through to find something decent. So here we are. We're pressed. What are we going to do? We had to, again, sit down with ourselves and organize. That's when, we, that's when, all, when you start to hear talk about exponential growth and organization and all of that, that's when it was born. It was born then. And I'm going to tell you how it happened. Us sitting down with ourselves, meaning that we had to communicate with each other. We had Captain Barnabas. I didn't know that he knew what he knew. We had other brothers. I did not know what they knew. Deacon Malachi has a business. He has trucks. We didn't know that. We found out that day. Uh, Deacon Yahshua has skills in terms of looking for property. He's basically like our officer David, as y'all know the all y'all click pretty well together. <laughs> yeah. 
So we began to look inside the advertisements, and we had found this property in the Bronx, Paulding Avenue. We had found this place in the Bronx. And understand that we did not really have real time to look for the perfect place. Y'all follow me? Because we have to make sure that the congregation is not broken in their spirit. This is a stress on us. So we have to, again, assess each of our abilities. Brothers didn't know that I had uh, some education in drafting and electrics. They didn't know that. They found out that day. Other brothers that had uh, skills in carpentry, plumbing, we found out that day because we had to sit down and assess our values in the heat of the moment. Can you dig it? We come across a place. Show the next picture. So we move, the, we move all of our stuff, the trucks, we brought the trucks in that night, took everything out of there. The, the landlord standing outside, he just sees us exiting the Pharaoh's kingdom. He just sees us all just, he's like, well, where, where are you going? I said, you told us to leave. No, I didn't. I told you that just the rent was such as I said, no, that's cold. Forget the hell out. <laughs> so we gone. Now we come across this place. Look at this place here. Can y'all see this? <laughs> this is we one of the brothers that was with us said, because we looked at this first, and we showed it to him, and the question was, could we make this happen? That's what the question was. Could we make this happen? One of us said, nah, man, we, we can't do it. Barnabas looked at it and said, man, we can have that done in three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Captain Hananiah. He said, well, Barnabas see it. I see it. Captain I get down. Captain Anna and I get down. So I'm looking at brothers that's ready to get it in. And then I said, well, if we could do that, because I mean, you know, we're looking at it. And I'm already looking at it from my, I said, there's no electric sockets in there. There's no lights. That's from the sunlight from the window. There's no power lines nowhere in there. When I, y'all, y'all will hear me use words like when I say that there was a subway tunnel or cave. How many of y'all heard me say that? This is what I was talking about. That's what the place looked like. Y'all ain't seen nothing. I'm going to just let the slides roll. But I'm using this to describe what we went into. And then we had to, this is where that term vision came in. When we went in there, this is what we saw with our eyes. But in order to get beyond this, you have to see what's not there. You have to see what is not apparent to your eyes. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and that faith, which, was, which is the works of us uniting our talents together, that became the evidence of things not yet seen, which is what this turned into. Y'all all right? So as this was happening, we saw this. Immediately, the drawings had to start drawing out this and that. Barnabas had to come in with his tools and his skills, and we all working. We, we, I mean, we literally sat down and actually had, like, we took them folding tables, and each of group had their tables, and we had to draw out what we needed to do to get that place up to where we needed to. Can y'all dig it? All just because we was put against a wall, while at the same time, I was working in Manhattan. I watched the white man build a building right in front of me. What I mean by that, when I say I watched them, meaning that the times that I was there working, they actually started to build a building right in front of me, and I watched how they do it. They sent in laborers. They sent in uh, 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 cement layers, steel workers. They st and I mean, they had teams that was going in. They do their job. When they leave, another group come in behind them, another group come in until the dang old thing was getting built. And I'm sitting there watching this, and I'm thinking, I'm like, how in the world am I going to sit here 
knowing what we know, and I'm going to watch this man just build a building right in front of me, and here we are, we got the skills to do what we need to do, we're going to get it done. And that's how we had to talk. We had to literally talk like that. We going to do it. We going to get it done. And ain't nothing going to stop us. And that's the fire that came behind that. And we went in there and did it. Then the kitchen got involved. Because we, we were working around the clock. Food, the, food, uh, the food line. Because we did not want to have to stop. Because the congregation can't come to this. So we were keeping the Sabbath in our houses for a few weeks. But we had to encourage them, don't lose faith because we are building our sanctuary. You feel me? It was similar to what happened here. When we had to leave Concord, we didn't come, did we? I'm trying to remember. There was a few weeks between us. And we were here working. But we had to keep, we had to keep the, the uh, spirits up. Brothers and sisters, we got a sanctuary coming. Don't lose hope. That's the reason why we had to do a preliminary tour because we weren't ready to fully open up. But I said, we got to let the people see. Because if we don't even let them see it, they might start to lose. They got to at least see the, what, what are they waiting for. So when they came and they said, okay, now nah, I know they just talk. That's what happened here. Y'all all right? So when we were doing that, and like I said, watching them, uh, watching this man just build this building in front of me, and I really began to say, I said, why is it that we can't do this? What, what is so great about them? I mean, I really had to say those things to me. And that's the reason why sometimes some people see my passion and my anger. When, I, when it comes to us not doing the things when I know that we got the capability of doing. Because I know we're great people. And when I don't see that, I get angry. Because I know you're the greatest people that ever put your foot on this damn planet. And when I don't see that, that angers me. So when I was watching, when I saw that happening, I'm like, why is it that we can expect all kind of greatness from them, but we can't expect it from ourselves? Then at the same time, we're giving billions and billions of dollars away in, this, in the U.S. economy every year. We can't get nothing done like this. Y'all understand what I'm saying? So, we start planning. We start making it happen. The sisters that were, um, that was preparing the food, they got a chance. To, we had to make it somewhat safe for them to come in. They couldn't come in right away. We had to make it halfway safe so that they could bring it and then, you know, and we can let them go back out. But we couldn't let, let them stay there. But, you know, they see it happening. And you can imagine because if you look at things in retrospect or, or hindsight, you might be able to say, oh, man, that wasn't really that bad. But if you never seen where we are today and that was your only reference of progress, your spirit might not be as what, you, what it is today. There was no seeing for some of us. There was no seeing beyond this. So you really have to really, really put some work in to really show that, listen, we can go beyond this here. So it took a lot of work, spiritual work, mental work, physical work. So let's, get, let's let them pictures go. Look, I want you all to really look at what you're looking at. We had to, lately, like I said, build the walls. It was all stone. Y'all all right? Look at this, look at this place. That's when we, was st we started to gather our tools up. Because we get ready to go to work. We get ready to build. Go ahead. Those were there. This is a basement. It was basically, this place was a plumbing supply area. No electricity, slow it down for a second. Uh, no electricity, no no, it was basically a storage where they used to just keep pipes. That's all they kept down there, a bunch of pipes. We told the landlord, all right, well, we're going to deal with this here. You got to get those pipes out of there. I said, we'll take it after that. So it was loaded with pipes. That was, that was the picture that we saw in the ad. That's when the brother said, yo, we can't, we can't make this happen. 
So once they cleared the pipes out, this is what was left. And to show you how messed up the place was, the landlord gave us three months free with a contract of five years. Three to, I think three to five years. I think it was a five, five-year contract. Understand how that works. You'll sign a contract, and I'm going to give you three months of free rent. But in that fourth month come, pay. You follow me? That's the contract that will have you locked in for five years. You all follow me? So, again, the pressure is on our back. We get ready to, the question is, do we sign a five-year contract with this kind of place? The pressure, the stress. How would we get the people to support us with this? You really got to really do some spiritual work to really show that, listen, we are going somewhere. You got to really paint vision. You got to really give uh, a real example of, listen, we ain't bull jiving. We're going to get this thing done. The people have to really see and believe that. And usually, when you see people believing like what people say about leaders, if you see leaders that are really serious and you see they really got some direction, it's easier for me to follow somebody like that. Because if, I, if, if they have so much faith in this thing and they're actually working every nuance of their spirit in it, it's bound to have some kind of return. So we got in here, so the guy gave us that as, an, as our option. Three months. After that, pay, and I forget, the, I think it was, I forget what the amount was. I don't remember. I don't remember. But as you know, New York ain't cheap. Y'all follow me? So we would have been on the hook. We were on the hook, basically, for five years. Um, so the first three months, the, the money that we would have had to pay, we used that for construction materials. Had to buy basically everything. Wiring, switches, plugs, light fixtures, floor. We had to actually put a floor in there. Had to build a floor. You're going to see it. So go ahead. Run the pictures. So, so it's telling you what it was called. Ed Plumbing Express Plumbing. That was the name of the place. Notice, notice look, look at this place. That, all that was left in there. Go ahead. Mm. Can y'all can y'all really see? Can y'all really see what y'all looking at? How discouraging would this be to brothers and sisters of little faith? After that trauma that we just went through in 1088. Come on. Now we're starting to sweep up a little bit. Just look at that. That's the, that's the whole area in there. There's just different pictures of the walls. Come on, continue. So, come on. So, we're just moving through. Everybody's with me. So, it, as you see, I took a lot of, a lot of pictures of... Uh, Captain Zephaniah is what we call the, sorry, you can slow down. Captain Zephaniah is what we call, it's a loose term we call him. We call him the documentary, the documentarian. Meaning he documents our, uh, what, what you call our milestones, so to speak, when we do things. And that's what I was pretty much doing here. I, I always like to take pictures because I'm already thinking beyond this. Understand my, understand my motive. I'm taking pictures, and I don't know the future, meaning as, as actually seeing it. But I have faith that we're going to go well beyond this. That's what I'm thinking. So I said, I'm going to take pictures now to be able to show later what we went through. So that means you got to see beyond where you're at. You got to see beyond where we were at that moment. I said, we're going to document these pictures, and we're going to bring it up. So... This is what you're looking at. Go ahead. That's the inside of the place. Now, y'all might not understand what this is going to turn into. But as we keep on rolling, that's Bishop there. That's Barnabas. And I think that was uh, Captain Shim. 
So we end up, we in there. All that wood, we bought that because we got to frame the walls up. We got to literally build walls. So we put the sheetrock up. That's some of the wiring that I was working on. Uh, we're doing some other stuff there. This is when we went to Home Depot to buy the, buy the lights and all of that. Go ahead, click through. The flooring. We had to buy floors. Look. Y'all see it. We, this was, we bought this stuff and took it in there. Meanwhile, paying because in three months, we're going to have to pay. And if this place ain't finished, we still got to pay for it. That's how it works. Go ahead. So we're trying to figure out what lights we're going to use, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Go ahead. So as you see, you see progress, correct? That's what's going down. You see the flooring stack that we ready to roll. Damn. Look at this. And we're looking back at it now. But that ain't how it was as y'all saw the beginning stages of that. So when I talk vision, I ain't just talking jive. This is where we come from. And, I, and, that, and you have to believe in this before you actually bring in one screw, one nail. You got to see beyond this before you even start. It has to be seen in your head first. Go ahead. Barnabas. This is uh, Barack Barr. He was a brother that died. We, we missed that brother. Great brother. Okay. The, like I said, building the floors. Look, look. We had to actually build a floor on top of a broken floor. Hmm. And notice this, we're using work lights. The, the lights that you see is coming from work lights. Remember, there's no lights up there yet. We're using those plug-in lights on the pole. That's what we're using to light the place up. In the dark, we're working through the night. So this was for the outside uh, to light up. They had a garage area. The garage area we later built turned into the studio. Pause it for a second. I didn't bring those pictures. There was, there's, there's a video where we were in, we were doing the, it's on the 10th anniversary. There's like five discs. And we did a, we did the interviews with the deacons, with the officers and all that. Do y'all remember a section of that video where you saw the purple walls? Do y'all? It's a, you know, you probably have to go back and look for it. That purple walls was the studio. That's what that's what we had to build beside that. That was where, where we were where we were record A Deacon Asaph, uh Kings in the Building. Those videos were made in that part there. Okay. Go ahead. That's Barnabas and that's uh my uh Mike Allah in New York. Go ahead. So as you see, the work is getting in there. That was me, my little meter. Uh, you can see all this stuff on the floor. All that, we had to keep buying that stuff and doing the work. And you notice that we got plastic bags on the windows because we don't want people looking in. New York is thievery. They see that the place, if we, if we ever left the place and they peek it in, they say, oh, shh, they got flooring, they got tools, they got this, they busted in. They're taking it. Thank you. <laughs> So we black the windows out. Because we know, we, we, we know how it is. Here's New York. I mean, the uh, bathrooms, we had to do that. Go ahead. Look at, the, look, look, look at what we went into. But keep, keep on going. <laughs> you, you say to yourself, damn. That's Captain Abiel. Doing some painting. And we were using every talent that came on the deal, we bring it in. So the walls are up, we paint the walls now. There's Captain Bon I mean, yeah, Captain Barnabas, he's painting, getting it in. You see the floor. Notice the floor is done. That's the subfloor. We we didn't put the planks down yet, the wooden planks. Go ahead. That's Deacon Ithon. He's getting it in. <laughs> see the work lights? That's what I was talking about. That's what we use to light the place up. Go ahead. Notice, have, are y'all starting to notice how the place is coming together? 
Go ahead. Still, we still using those work lights. This is in a basement. This is incredible. They don't even look like the same basement. No, that's the same place. That's the same place. That was what, there was a, a leak that was coming from the apartment above us. That's what brothers was working on that. These are the light bulbs that we had to use to put the uh, fixtures up. Now, this is the time when we, the light fixtures were starting to get put up in the place. Okay. Yeah, Bishop, y'all put that ceiling up as well? That, that we painted it. That, those metal pieces were there, but we had to treat all of that. No, no a lot of that we had to, we had to replace. A lot, of, a lot of it was missing. A lot of work, as you can see. Captain Shim with the flooring. Who is this? That's Barnabas again. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is uh, Captain Hananiah and Barnabas. Those two always work together. Okay, so we're putting the flooring down. Are y'all seeing this? <laughs> now we got the lights up. Now we got the front. Like these lights here, that's where that idea came from. Tell your story after this. Just hold it. This uh, Captain Joel and Captain Hananiah. Look how tired those men look. Putting in that work, baby. Go ahead. Getting it in. Putting that flooring in. Mm. Still ain't put the lights up yet. This is still dealing with the work lights. Now we now the lights are being. I'm starting to get the lights going on. Come on. Just waiting to connect them up and all that. So that's, those are the placements of it. Hold it. That's Deacon Yashua. What he was doing, he was, in, he was using this material called to encapsulate pipes because pipes have asbestos. So you had to... Um, encapsulate that so this doesn't break loose and all that other stuff. So that's that's what was happening there. That's why it's got that suit on. We were get, making sure that none of that got on us. So we had to encapsulate it before we let anybody in there. All that kind of stuff. So okay. Yeah, as y'all can see, can, you, can y'all see the transformation? That's, look at it. That's me and Deacon, that's me and uh, Captain IBL. We're actually putting up the light fixtures there. There's Captain Barnabas again. Okay, there's more painting. There's uh, brother, well, his, uh, Soldier Barack Bar actually. Uh, we want to give us that facial, all praises. That's my brother. Okay, so as you can see, the work was rolling. Okay. We had to do that, had to paint that. That was uh, a set of the piping that came from the second floor. We had to encapsulate all of that. Okay. So, hold it. Right there. You see the lights on. That's the actual lights that lit up the place. Okay. Now, go ahead on. Oh, boy. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. So that's the bathroom, the back bathroom areas. Okay. So we de we're dealing with the women bathrooms, the men bathrooms. That's what we've been doing in that area there. So, as y'all can see, we had to really get it in, right? So I'm just running through these things, just letting y'all see. Bishop, did the inspectors have to come and look at it? Yeah, yeah, we had all that done. We actually had some of the brothers that actually uh, worked for the city that was able to make sure that everything was coded and all of that, you know, so. Yep. So now now we set up. Um, that's part of the setup there. So you can see Deacon Asaph and Deacon Ithon. That's the table. 
where we was teaching from. You see, look at the old system that we had with the wired mics and all of that. Okay. So what we were doing there was really testing out this, testing out everything, making sure the sound worked and all that. So that's what was going on there. Okay. Now, just pause it there. Do y'all recognize that look? <laughs> so those classes like um, joining Israel, the organized nation, this is what the inspiration was about. This is what inspired it. So when I was talking about us standing up and being counted, it's coming from not only our history in the Bible, but from the works that we had to uh, do and be men and stand up and do what God gave us the ability to do. Go ahead. I ain't had no, what, uh, did I have gray hair? Yeah, I had some gray hair there. Okay, stop. That's, that's the inside of it. You see where the chairs were, the sister's chairs would sit this way, the brothers would sit that way. You had the TV in the corner and all that, okay? And there you go. So that's the, I think that's the last picture. I think the other two are videos. Uh, okay, you got that. Okay. So we still, as y'all can see, okay, that's it. You can come out of that. that that's it. So all praise to the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. <laughs> so when I say, when I mention things about how great we are, and there's a lot of, of uh, people that put their hands in this. Men, women, children, everybody. Was to make sure that, um, that we got, got the school up and running. Brothers and sisters were very happy to be able to come in and the fellowship. You know, we even ran air conditioning in there later. You know, yeah, we ran air conditioning in there. You know, with the inverter system outside with the, you know, so we had to do that, and uh, and that's how and that's how it went. So from there, that's when we went to the Mount Vernon building and did the whole process all over again. And y'all think y'all seen that video, okay? And then from there, we came here. Well, I came here, and you know, and we got another spot in Eden, New York. I mean, Eden, North Carolina. That's also gonna come on. That's gonna come on through. So the work doesn't stop. The work doesn't stop. And our ability to continue to stand up doesn't stop. Okay. All right. So uh, give a couple more scriptures, right? And then give the brothers and sisters a break. Y'all all right? Okay. Uh, yeah. 1422. 1422 to 27. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 14, and verse 22. Moreover, this was not enough for them. So this is a case. Now, with what, now what, what I just showed on the uh, video is the great work that we did within our collection of righteous spirits. Everybody's with me. But while we're doing that, there's still evil on the outside of these walls. There's evil on the outside of this project that I just showed y'all. Y'all all right? So with, as, as we move to do these things, you got a lot of wickedness that don't want to see us come to the reality. And mind you, I forgot to mention this. The landlord was a lawyer in this place. That was, you understand? He knew the law. He really thought that we were not going to get that place up and running. You feel me? He knew he had us locked. He came downstairs once the place was done. Because the, the, the neighbors, man, they hammering, they doing all kinds of stuff. They complained to him. We, was, we, we worked on this thing for like two months. This thing took some time to get this done. So they were paying rent, but at, at the same time, we had to abide with noise ordinances, you know, all that kind of stuff. So at like 10 o'clock, we said, listen, we need the time to do it. You're trying to hold us to a to a thing. We we get, we got to get this work done. So he gave us a ten, you know, to like ten o'clock, and you know after that, then so we had to we had to understand what we had to do. We had to organize how we did things. 
All of the heavy type of work, we had to do it during the, during the morning hours. And that we had to leave the quiet stuff to work beyond that into the morning. So it's not to disturb them because this, this is a 20, we have to keep this thing. We, we cannot afford to just leave and come back the next morning. That's time that we need. So a lot of organization came in to do this here. So when a guy came, so when, it's, when it was all done, he comes down because, like I said, he did not expect that we would get the place up. Y'all saw that last picture? Turn, go, go back to that last picture with the, um, with the chairs. He came. Y'all already know. Could y'all, could, is, is it possible for you to do an A-B comparison with that first picture and this? Can y'all do it? I'm asking my IT brothers. That first picture. Okay, just hang on. Yeah. We're going to work on it. What showed? Yeah, okay, you did it. This is what we took when we got there. This is when he said, you got three months, da 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 Right? Everybody's with me. And his mind, I got him. Can you dig it? There ain't no way in the world they're going to be able to get this thing up. Now, remember the pressure now. Congregation been out. The landlord got crazy with the last place. The rent, the rent went up. We got all that on our back. We, had, we were forced, not like we were unwilling, but we were uh, prompted, I guess I should say, to look inside our talents and see what we can do as an organized nation. That's when that term came up. That's on the back of our shirts. It came from this here. We had to look and say, you know what? We got no choice. We got to do it. So we inherited this. Now show the next picture. So then it ended up at that. So the guy came downstairs and he saw this. He didn't see none of the project. He didn't see the progress, the, the process. He didn't see any of that at all. His last memory was what that first picture was. Then he comes down and he sees this. Guess what the devil says? <laughs> nice color. <laughs> he, was hurt. He, was hurt. he was hurt. He couldn't believe it. Because the deal was, he was saying, where's the white people? That's what he was saying. Oh, just you black people did this? That's what he was saying. He was blown away. I wish I would have took that picture. He was blown away. He said, ain't no way, boy. <laughs> he was blown away. Now, here's the funny part about it. We're locked in at our rate. The way the place looked now, he can get twice, damn near three times the monies. But he's locked with us for five years. He was thinking that, listen now, he was thinking that he had us to be in a bomb, bomb shelter for five years, come out, paradise with air conditioning, all of that. A couple of years later, we got the Mount Vernon building in 2015. We don't want to occupy two spots. So we, the same crew plus more, because more people in now, now we go build the Mount Vernon school, but we still have this. He says, basically, I will let y'all out because he knows he could get, that is a community center now. But before, it was what y'all saw. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> so he allowed, that's my understanding, I think we were there for like three years, and then they, you know, he just took the loss on the last because it wasn't going to be the money that he could get for renting it to somebody else for three times the price, which is what he did. I drove by there and saw it. He got a whole nother setup going up, and then they're in there dancing and partying and all types of stuff going on in there right now. 
But that just goes to show, we didn't need it. We were going. The Lord had blessed us. We literally got our own building, blah, you know, Mount Vernon. Y'all know the deal. So these are these are things that comes to mind when you do not think as hidden people. If you think hidden, you're not going to do stuff like this here. And I say that to you women and to you men. Don't ever let anybody bring you to the level of like you're less and, and try to step on your, on your greatness and your pride. I'm serious about that. Always hold your head up high because you are the people of the Lord. And if you're the people of the Lord, it's nothing expected from you but the absolute best. And that's how I see you. Some of y'all know me in here. When, of how I deal with things in this, in this building that I don't like. I said, why are we allowing this little thing to happen this way and the little piece of that form? I said, we're better than that. I want it tip top. Because we are the tip top people. I don't accept mediocrity. And if I don't accept it, I don't expect you to accept it either. You have to have that thing that whatever you put your hands to, that's, that's excellent right there, brothers. Whatever you put your hands to, when you let it go, you say to yourself, I could put my name on it because I put my very best in it and it represents me. That's the pride that you have to take in your work and everything that you do. Put your absolute best into it and accept the fruit of your hands. That's why I talked about Adam. When God made Adam, before he formed him, he said, let us make man in our image. And he made man and then came woman. And before man was made, God had to see man in his mind first. Before the earth was made, God had to see the earth in his mind first, in God's mind. He had to see day and night first before night and day existed. Y'all follow me? So if that's how God is made, he made man that same way. He gave man the ability to have vision in his head that is not yet seen. But what did God do? God manipulated the elements to create daylight. It was all like the Bible says, the earth was without form and, with, and was void and without form. He had to take half of the elements and shade it to create daylight and night. Okay? Then he had to create, he had to take the, the elements, the molecules, and make earth. And to make uh, the dry land and the seas, the water, vegetation. He had to see that in his mind first. You feel me? Then it was created. Then he said, I want to make man to operate the same way. He puts man on this earth, the black man, the black man, put the black man on this earth. And he gives Adam the same mind that operates like his. Okay, Adam, I'm going to put you on this earth with vegetation, water, land, and you are going to have to formulate clothing. You're going to have to formulate housing. You're going to have to formulate everything else. But in order for you to formulate it, you have to see it in your head first. When he saw it in his head, then he had to train his hands to go out into the earth and draw the materials and fashion them to mimic what's in his head. That's vision. The chair that Adam would sit in did not exist before he put it in his head. The house that he had to live in to cover shame, like the scriptures say, did not exist before he had to put it in his head. He had to see it in his head first. Then he had to take his hands 
and manipulate the, the, the minerals in the earth to bring forth chair, to bring forth clothing, to bring forth the house to cover shame, to bring forth a vineyard. He had to see that in his head first. And if God can do that with Adam, and we are the children of Adam, why is it that we can't do that? So we are to never let anyone kill your aspirations for greatness. I'm almost 60 years old, and I've seen a lot of situations where people have allowed negative people to kill their spirit. To kill their to kill their ingenuity and their and and their desire to be great, and I hate to see that. A people that is bubbling with talent, don't squander that talent. Christ gave you that talent for a reason. That's what I was going over last week about the pounds. He gave us the pounds. He said one. He gave one ten. He gave another one five, and he gave another one one. He said, are you going to use my talents that I gave you? And God gave us all talents. And that's what we had to do when that landlord got funky with us. We had to assess the talents within us and ask, what are we going to do with these talents? And then we had to communicate to find out who had what talents. And we traded the talents among each other. I ended up learning about stuff that they were doing that I didn't go to school for. Same thing with some of the others. We're trading, and we're able to get the work done. And that's just on a, you know, construction level. That also happens to us in the spirit. Some of us are good teachers. Some of us are um, uh, good speakers in the, in, you know, in the camps. Do great works with the children. Do great works with the Titus too, the daughters of Sarah. These are different skills that each of y'all have. The young men's outreach program, stuff like that, these are good, these are good talents that y'all have. But everybody doesn't know every other body's talent. But if I'm communicating with these brothers, I can learn a little bit to be a little better because I'm learning from him. He can learn a little bit from what I know, and it makes him a that's trading talents. Some some brothers are some brothers and sisters are good with with exhorting brothers and sisters who are saddened who are down in their spirit. You get one brother that don't really know how to exalt the brother when some adversity has happened to him or her. They don't really know how to really lift their spirit up. But then brother so-and-so come along, and sister so-and-so come along and talk to that same brother and able to lift that brother and that sister back up. And then me, as the one that don't know how to do that, I want to have a conversation with him so that I can learn a little bit of that talent. Now, my, we traded some talent. Now I know a little bit about how to exalt my brothers and my sisters for the women. The women know how to do the same thing when they trade their talents among each other. This is the greatness of unity. This is the greatness of, of being in this congregation. And we pray to the Lord that he keep his spirit with us and uh, keep moving in the right direction. So with that, I'm going to stop with this section of it. And I'm going to continue maybe in another two weeks. All praise to the Most High. Shalom. Black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 
144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.